Hi, I'm Dr. Jerry Jackson, out with the wild things. It seems like every kid in North America has had one, a red-eared slider. It's the turtle once commonly sold in pet stores and is easily distinguished by its flat shape, green back, and prominent red mark just behind each eye. It doesn't really have external ears, but the marks are about where ears might be. The red-eared slider is native to the Midwest and South from Indiana to Texas and North Florida, but it is now found in many places around the world as a result of introductions, including in South Florida. The red-eared slider prefers quiet waters with lots of vegetation and a few floating logs to crawl out onto for basking. Females can grow to nearly a foot in length. Males are much smaller. Bigger size of females allows them to produce up to 20 eggs, which they lay in holes they dig into the ground, often far from water. Red-eared sliders are raised commercially for the pet trade and, as a result, have been introduced around the world. They can now be found in the wild from Thailand to California to South Florida. Baby turtles may seem cute as pets, but most end up dead or in poor health for lack of proper care. Their needs differ from one kind of turtle to the next, but most normally grow rapidly and thus need a lot of protein. In the wild, they get protein from aquatic insects and other tiny animals. Dried commercial foods are formulated to provide most needs, but not as efficiently as a diverse natural diet. The saying, diversity is the spice of life, is certainly true for pet turtles. Offer your pet fresh insects or tiny bits of raw fish from time to time. A pet aquatic turtle needs to be fed on a regular basis, and the amount it is fed will depend on the kind of turtle, how big it is, and the temperature of the water. Bigger turtles and warmer water mean a bigger appetite. You can judge how much to feed your turtle by watching how much it consumes within about 15 minutes. Uneaten food in the water can create unhealthy conditions, so more feedings with smaller portions and frequent cleaning of the turtle's water are important. Baby turtles, such as the once commonly sold red-eared slider, need a lot of calcium for growing bones and shell as well as for muscle contraction. Without adequate calcium, a baby turtle's shell often gets soft and the turtle weakens and dies. Even if calcium is provided, baby turtles can't use it efficiently without vitamin D. The good news is that they can manufacture the vitamin D themselves if exposed to sunlight. Any light at all may cause your turtle to crawl out onto a rock or log to bask, especially stretching its hind legs out and orienting them to soak up the rays. Don't let this fool you, however. Sunlight coming through a window or a normal electric light bulb won't do the job. Turtles need some direct sunlight or exposure to a UV lamp on a regular basis. If you put your pet turtle out in the sun, make certain that it can always move into shade. A typical turtle bowl contains only a small amount of water and this can heat up rapidly in the Florida sun. And glass walls of the container can trap heat in, creating potentially lethal temperatures for your pet. Being an informed and responsible pet owner is important. At first, it is difficult to tell male and female red-eared sliders apart, but as they grow, differences become evident. A healthy female can grow to nearly a foot long, whereas a male rarely gets more than half that size. The female must be larger because she will produce up to 20 one-inch long white eggs in each of her two to three clutches per year. The smaller male seems built for speed and when it's time for breeding, he literally swims circles around a female, stopping in front of her to tickle her cheeks with his exceptionally long toenails as part of his courtship. When it's time to lay eggs, a female red-eared slider leaves the water and often travels some distance to find just the right soil conditions. She digs a hole with her hind legs, deposits her eggs, and leaves never to return. Eggs that survive raccoons, skunks, and other predators hatch within about 10 weeks. New baby turtles are prime targets for everything from alligators, crows and herons, to big fish. It's a tough world out there, but an adult red-eared slider may live 50 to 75 years, and enough young survive that red-eared slider populations are booming. 
While red-eared sliders can inhabit a diversity of freshwater habitats, they are primarily a turtle of ponds and sluggish streams and canals. Although native to the south central United States, as a result of their popularity in the pet trade, red-eared sliders have been introduced all over the world, including Florida. Over 52 million baby red-eared sliders were exported from the United States between 1989 and 1997. In the United States, the sale of baby turtles was banned in 1975 because of dangers to humans from the disease Salmonella that turtles can carry. The ban left a loophole, however, allowing sale of baby turtles for educational purposes. In recent years, pet red-eared sliders have again increased in popularity. Red-eared sliders have been breeding in the wild in South Florida since at least the early 1990s. The success of the red-eared slider has been to the detriment of native creatures. The red-eared slider is also a predator on native fishes, other animals, and aquatic plants, but we don't know just how serious problems might be. Red-eared sliders do have enemies. Cars, alligators, and other predators take a heavy toll. With the Wild Things is produced at the Whitaker Center and the College of Arts and Sciences at Florida Gulf Coast University. For the Wild Things, I'm Dr. Jerry Jackson.